there is children's spirits here. Was this what you were looking for? They sound like a kid. You hear their voices. How can we help you? How can we make you not sad? A boy either died, committed suicide, or had accidental death here. Were they bullying you? They've been. Are you on Kyle's head? We travel to Fremont, Ohio for our next investigation at the Beale Manor. In 1898, Jerome Beale built the mansion. Beale himself did not die here and the mansion served as an ordinary home to his family until he sold it to the Wolf family in 1922. Clarence and Daisy Wolf then owned the mansion for the next 40 plus years. In the 1940s, Clarence was hit by a car across the street and sent to the hospital. Though he did not die from the initial strike, his poor health along with long-term injuries caught up to him, where he then passed away in 1944 in the manor. Daisy also had deteriorating health and died in the home as well in 1966. After the Wolf family passed, the house was then converted into a home for the mentally challenged and unwanted children by the Lucas County Group Home. There is children's spirits here. I mean, I hear them, you'll, you'll hear their voices, they run around, I found footprints upstairs. Children would stay in the home until they turned 18 years old, after they would be transported somewhere else. There have been stories of suicidal children in the house, though the details still remain uncertain. After it became a group home, a boy either died committed suicide or had accidental death here, but it's hearsay. Though details aren't available at the moment, multiple different groups have seen the same red-headed child playing around the staircase. In fact, when the current owner, Carlo, bought the property, he didn't even know that it was riddled with unseen beings. As I turned the corner here, I looked on the landing up here, and I swear there was a boy standing there. I looked up, I looked down, looked up, and he was gone. And I'm thinking, I'm freaking myself out. and. I never told anybody this story because I thought it was just imagination. I had a team in here, and they were up in the attic. And the one woman, she actually wrote it in a book. She's like, well, I've seen a boy with red hair walk into the attic and disappear. And that's what I saw standing on, on the landing. He had red hair, black suit, and white shirt. I had a local sheriff lady. So we do the dungeon tours here. Okay. And uh, she does, a, she's a real sheriff, she's upstairs in the courthouse, you know, she guards it at night and stuff, so she's into the paranormal. And she heard I bought this place. Is someone here? Shit, I want her. Holy shit. Is that a shadow? Oh yeah. Literally a, a full shadow right here. I thought it was coming from the outside. Through the window. What's that? Through the window? Like the, yeah, the curtain? Yeah, right here. Like it covered that whole thing, just like this. Like yeah. you see my hand. Uh -huh. I thought it was somebody coming in the door. The hauntings of the Beale Manor don't stop after a few sightings and sounds. Down in the basement, things become more frightening as the spirits try to scratch and even biting people who go down there. Carlo did express that these aren't demonic scratches, but more of children who are misbehaving and wanting attention. This area here is where people have been bitten. Um, the, gen the guys usually get bit here. A lot of the ladies get scratched in here um, when they walk through here. Um, my girlfriend and I were standing right there and she's like, oh my gosh, she started grabbing her back and she said that something rubbed her finger down her back. Whatever is down here is wanting attention. This is the window where people have seen the guy looking out. They say the curtain would be open, they would see somebody like this and they would, they would close. All right, so we are here, Fremont, Ohio. Beale Manor, we're finally getting started. So we're gonna do a first sweep around the house, doing a little more old school. We got the old digital recorder that we have, the Sony, and we also got a new piece of equipment that we actually bought today from the Beale Manor, from this case right here, right there. We got the tri-field meter. So this is very old school style EMF, very accurate. Um, so we're gonna be rolling around the house with the tri-field. And without night vision, this is what we see. Oh, it's dark. Just natural lighting. Really? Yeah. Scary? A little bit. And now we're back. Your face is green. It's green. It's pretty cool. It, it is green. green. We've gone green. Airplane mode. 
And then we got airplane, oh, airplane mode right there. Yeah. So. My watch also has airplane mode. Now what airplane mode does is it helps um, block radio frequencies coming in through your phones because that could interfere with EMFs in any way possible and you know we don't want that happening. So that's why we always put our devices on airplane mode. And if you're going to be a future investigator, I recommend you also putting your phones in airplane mode or watches, whatever device. So just a paranormal investigating tip. Looks like we have a baseline reading of about three. Dude, the five is just way different up here. Yeah, it is. It really is. I was whispering, by the way. As you can see, it goes up to a hundred. So this is the window, the famous window that everyone. Did you just touch me? Did you just touch my face? If you can, can you interact with that device in his hand? Just come close to him. If you touch this, the needle will spike up. That's just gonna let us know that you're with us. What I was saying is this is the famous window that people see uh, a man standing out and looking outside and peeking through the curtains by multiple people. I'm not feeling right. You're not feeling right? Um, uh, well, not really feeling bad, but I feel like I'm getting poked. Well, I, I got hit by like a spider web feeling. Well, hey, hey, hey. Well, let's just do an EVP real quick. Okay, yeah. As I'm standing outside of the room where many witnesses have seen a man standing and looking out the window, I feel something touch my face. Sometimes when a spirit touches you, it can feel like a light tickling sensation, similar to if you were to walk into a spider web. We decide to use our digital recorder, which has sensitive microphones that are capable of hearing things that the unaided ear is unable to, in hopes to capture this potential spirit. Was someone touching me? Can you come talk to us? Who stands at this window? Do you like looking outside? Can't think of where to go. In here. This room here? Oh. Hello. Can you play with that toy? Can you touch the uh, unicorn? The, the pink unicorn? Yeah, can you come in here? Here, we'll play with you. Can you hear footsteps, by the way? I heard something out there, like a knock. So, down in the basement is where uh, people are said to be bitten and scratched. Men are supposed to get bitten, females are supposed to get scratched, um, historically, so hopefully that doesn't happen, but if it does, well, hopefully it's bad enough to leave a mark, I guess. Let's go. What a wait.
Hello? Dance? Why do you want me to dance? Norman. Who's Norman? Norman Osborne? Oh, jeez. This what? wire scared me. Tim. Tim, if we pull out a... I don't have it. I have an EVP. Tim, do you want us to communicate? Can you leave us... Can you give us an EVP? Bad. So no EVP? Is that hard to use? Fall. You had a bad fall? Did you hear that? That was a footstep. Yes, right it was. There. Yes, it was. Was that you? Can you come up here? Can you make another footstep? Can you walk closer? Figure. Are you trying to show yourself? It's a figure. Right after the first step. That's pretty cool. Can you touch Jack? Scan. Figure scan. SLS. SLS. Dance. <gasps> they wanna, they wanna... Are you going to dance for us? We go back upstairs to set up our SLS in hopes that we capture the spirit on camera. Can you show yourself in front of the, in front of us? You're over here. Can you dance? Basement. Did it really? Yeah. You in the basement? Can you stand next to Jack and dance with him? That's dancing figure right there. Kurt. Just go in here. Yeah. Are you in here? Ouch. I'm bored. Show yourself next to me. We could dance together like you wanted to. Is that what you wanted? Tim, are you here? Tim, can you show yourself? Rub. 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 Yep. Figure? Yep. Mm -hmm. What's your side? Yep, that's it. You dancing? I don't know. Dan oh, he's bobbing up and down. Bobbing up and down. Bobbing up and down. Bobbing up and down. Dresser. Over there. Uh uh. No, up straight ahead. Straight right ahead. Here? He's far away from you. Five. Five. Five what? He's gone. Gone. Come back. Much. Where you at? Where did you go? Can you touch Jack? Can you give him a little poke? Can you poke him? You want me to hold that camera? Why? Why? Intelligently, Jack's obelisk captures a word that directly answers my question, wondering why I'm requesting such a thing. Alright. Friend. Are you... Are we friends? Is it Tim and friend? Help! Friend, help! It wants us to help him! Hey, what's what's up? What? M. M? Like you? Like, are you trying to say me? Like, help... Friend, help me? What do you need help with? Just give us a word, and we will piece it together. Is this Tim? Yep. Stop. There is something on your shoulder. Right here? No, other one. It's cold, dude. It's freezing. He's gone. He was sadness. Were you on him? Were you on, were you trying to? It's cold. It is super cold. 
I think it was like trying to write, like piggyback ride it. Dude, you, like I get it, like it's the basement and all, but I wasn't feeling this cold earlier. I have chills up to my butt. Cement. Yeah, the basement has cement all through it. Is this spirit telling Jack that it's cold because we're in a cement basement? Chills up to my butt. Cement. How can we help? We're friendly. Three. Are there three of you that need help? Is there three of us? Including you and us two? How can we help? Why are you so sad? He's right there again, dude. Up. Can you show yourself on Jack's shoulder again? How can we help you? How can we make you not sad? Love! Love, dude! Dude, who was here? Children who were pretty much abandoned. Right! Do you just want love? You know... Twelve. Are you twelve years old? Are you in here? We're getting some interesting things, Jack. Yeah, we are. Hey, could we help you out? Like, we, how can we love you? How can we be a friend to you? Stop. Can you wave? Did, he's touching, he touched your shoulder. He reached out and touched your shoulder. Can you hold my hand? No, your back is to him. Oh, my back is to him? Can you hold my hand? I'm friendly. Can you walk away? Yep, yep. Can you just leave the frame? Just walk over. Just keep walking over that way. Is he walking away? Reach over. This figure was popping in and out for about five minutes until now when it disappeared for good. Then as we're about to leave the room, we capture this. Can you poke Jack's leg again? Or I guess he didn't do it the first time. Oh, you got something right in front of the... Is it this side? Agreed. Are you Russ? We Are you the one that we've been talking to? Could these two figures be the same figure that we saw poking from behind Jack earlier that's moving around the room? Or could these be three separate figures that the Ovilus was referring to previously? How can we help? We're friendly. Three. Are you here? Nice job. Was this what you were looking for? Who are you? Grandpa? 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 That sounds like a kid. You looking for your grandpa? Can you stand next to Kyle? No, sir. Hey, who's the sad one? Jesus. 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 Why? With no further responses, we work our way upward with the SLS. Ready? You good? You in here? Oh my gosh. You see anything in here, dude? Dresser. Really? Yeah. Dude, I just... It's like stretching. Can you 
you touch it's me? It's like on the dresser and on the wall. Are you trying to get into the mirror? What's on the wall? I was like touching it, like it was like almost wanting to like, like guard it in a way. It was like towering over the mirror. There again. Well, oh, dude, it was like standing in front of the freaking mirror. Can you touch my hand? It's there again. Dude, there's something in the mirror. Is it me? I have a reflection. Touch Kyle. Dude, stuff keeps touching the screen and adjusting it. It seems like every time Jack captures a figure in the mirror room, the SLS camera starts bugging out. You can see in this clip that he's not touching the screen at all. Oh, it's right in front of you. Can you touch Kyle? Dude, stuff keeps touching the screen and adjusting it. Could this be one of the spirits messing with our equipment while manifesting? Who are you? Under. Under. <laughs> under me. What, under, what's under you? <laughs> Confused? Are you in the mirror? Like not in... Are you, are you on Kyle's head? Under me? He said under me. If he's on top of my head, then I'm under him. Who are you? Under. Under. <laughs> under me. Just coming through the door. You over here? God, he looks messing up. Me? Is that you? Were you over by the door? We're capturing all kinds of figures in this room. Some which we can probably debunk as being my reflection, but others that don't seem to have any sort of explanation to them. Such as this one that appeared on the wall away from the other spirits. You can even see it inch closer to the doorway before vanishing, as if it completely left the room. Show yourself right here. There? I don't know if it's like mapping out the, the dresser or just like it's just there. But it's in the same spot every time. Is it me? No. Because you're blue. Can I keep moving? You try. We continue through the house to see if these figures are attached to the mirror room, or if perhaps they roam around the house. Is this the attic? That's the stairs down there. This is the attic. You good? Hello? 
Remember the tarp. Yeah? Oh god. What's wrong? I got really dizzy. Oh, I'm like really queasy at the same time. You up here? Let's switch. Holy crap. As soon as Jack enters the room, you can visually see how affected he is by the change in energy. He sets the SLS down to take a break, so I pull out the spirit box to see if there's a spirit that may be doing this. And the first response I get just may be the answer we're looking for. Are you making me feel queasy? Literally. Literally? What did you say? What's your name? Why are you affecting me? I don't know. One forty two time check. So Who are you? Carter. 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 Carter, what's your name? <laughs> Something's coming, and it didn't sound good. <laughs> it was right after I felt like I was going to pass out, or like throw up or something. And keep going. Yeah. <gasps> I just had a figure in here. Really? In the shower. I looked down and I was sweeping. I swept it away. I had a, like, it was like totally. Can you show yourself again? Make a noise in there? Can you move that little shower nozzle? The hose? Crazy. All right, so we are back in the basement. We're gonna try some Estes method. Uh, apparently people have had good luck in this room with the Estes method. So we're gonna see if we can communicate with those spirits who uh, told us they were sad and they needed help and hopefully get a few more direct responses so we have a better understanding on what we need to do. So, uh, over here we have Jack. He is going to be putting the headphones on. Jack, yeah. can you hear me? Yes, I can. I haven't started it yet, but... Um, okay. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull down my hat so I can't see, so I can't see what Kyle's saying, I can't read lips, and then <clears throat> it should be you know, totally unaware of my surroundings <clears throat> and especially when this is going off on a you know high volume i won't be able to hear him i may be able to hear like his vibrations off the wall but that's all i can hear i can't 
you know, hear any words. So hopefully we can communicate with the spirits we were communicating with earlier and try to get some answers and maybe we can help these spirits. All right, get started. All right. Children? Children. Do the children need help? Is that why they're here? How old are the children? Can you say Jack's name to him? Do you like to play games? Who wants to play a game? Do you miss your family? Do you need help? He's not saying anything. What do you want to be when you grow up? Who are we looking for? Who needed help? Is there anyone here? We're on the Fabulous 5B. See, look at this. There's like no dots coming over my device. So that's maybe why he's not getting anything. Oh, let me try something. I'm gonna actually go in the other room and see how long it's before he notices. Am I okay to leave? May I cause a? I don't know. Sure. With no further evidence on the spirit box nor the Ovilus 5, we decide to move on to our final session, where I go into the attic alone. All right, so Jack over here, he's gonna be staying downstairs. I'm going upstairs to the attic by myself. I was originally gonna to go to the basement, but based on the Estes method, uh, it just, it didn't seem like anything was there. Our Ovilus wasn't reading anything and he didn't get a single word. So um, whatever's there is not there right now. So I'm gonna go all the way upstairs. I'm gonna flip this camera around so I can actually see where I'm going. having a lot of luck with um, the Ovilus X as of lately. So we're gonna try and see what we can do. I'm just gonna relax with them. Why are you crying? Haze. Were you hazed? Language. Do you speak English? Two languages? Were they bullying you? They've been. For how long? How long have they been doing this to you? Do you have a friend? Peggy. So Peggy's your friend. If you're bullied, can you touch that red light to let me know? Can we communicate that way? Explain. So, the red light in front of me, if you get near that stick, it should turn different colors. Can you try that for me? Explain. 
explain life reason. I misread all of that. It seemed like the spirit that I was talking to was hazed and it made them cry. When I asked if they had any friends, they said Peggy. So, we're gonna try and use dowsing rods to figure out a little more about that. If you can hear my voice, can you push these rods together? Can you cross the rods if you can hear me? If you don't want to talk, can you cross these rods? If you want me to leave, can you cross these rods? Is there anyone here? Straight as an arrow. Beale Manor has been quickly growing in the paranormal community as being one of Ohio's most haunted houses. Our investigation tonight proved this to be true. Throughout the night, we've gathered captures that coincidentally align with some of the claims of the building, such as voices that appear to be missing the one thing that seems to make them happy. He was... Love! As well as intelligent SLS figures matching up with the statements and words that we received. Are you, are you on Kyle's head? Could one of the many figures that we captured have been the man in the second story window that is so famously seen here at the Beale Manor? 